Hi, I'm Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton, and I represent Virginia's 10th District in the U.S. House of Representatives. We can never repay the debt we owe to those who have served our country in uniform, but we do have a responsibility to care for our veterans and their families when they return home. I'm proud to offer this video series of conversations between my office's military and veterans liaison, Anthony Barnes, and veterans service organizations in our community to help Virginia 10 veterans get connected to resources that can get them that support that they need. I hope you enjoy these conversations and find them informative. And remember, my office is here to help however we can. Visit wexton.house.gov forward slash contact to get in touch with us. Thanks so much. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Anthony Barnes. I have the pleasure of serving as the military and veteran uh, manager for Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton here in Virginia's 10th district. I'd like to welcome you to our first of uh, our series of veteran service organization conversations. Um, this series will focus on veteran service organizations from across the 10th district that play a major impact on assisting, uh, helping out with the transition, day-to-day -day life, and the needs of our veterans um, as they continue their transition through life. Um, we look forward to hosting many organizations, but I couldn't think of a more appropriate uh, person to start this off with than uh, Ms. Corliss Udwema. Um, Ms. Corliss is a, a tireless advocate for veterans. Uh, innovative and, and oriented, uh, results oriented, entrepreneur, philanthropist, evangelist, author, and international motivational speaker. And as when I say she's motivational, I, I truly mean that. She serves as president and CEO of Contract Solutions, CSI, a national staffing firm where she grew from a seed of less than $50 to a successful multinational, multi-million dollar debt-free company. Ms. Corliss has been honored in so many ways uh, across the spectrum, from business to entrepreneurship to philanthropy. Too many to mention. One of her key accomplishments is, is the Small Business Administration's Virginia Small Business Person of the Year, which is uh, pretty amazing. Um, she's also the president of Agape Love in Action, and that's something we're going to focus on today, Alia, a nonprofit 501c3. The non her nonprofit efforts include Hope in a Bag, which last year provided more than 16,000 snack bags to homeless shelters and health frontline workers in four hospitals in Prince William, Fauquier, Fairfax, and Arlington. Um, her Wisdom Meets Technology program provides computer literacy training and free computers to senior citizens that have been in more, benefited more than 1,800 senior citizens. And one of the things we're going to talk about today, and the reason we're here, is her Business Battle Buddy program, another Aaliyah program that provides contracting, support, and business mentoring for veteran-owned businesses, in addition to grants to veteran nonprofits. This Corliss's organizations have provided over 100 thousand dollars to veteran nonprofits and organizations that support veterans pretty incredible she's got a passion for our veterans in a way that i can't even describe and uh the community at large she believes in putting action to her words which i truly appreciate her demonstrated love and support of veterans from both her uh for nonprofit and her for-profit program business battle buddies have earned her the rightly nicknamed 365-24-7 veteran supporter. So without further ado, Ms. Corliss Udwema. Thanks for joining me today, Ms. Corliss. I appreciate it so much. Oh, thank you for asking me. I'd love to speak with you because you always are about doing something for our veterans. And I love it. I love it. Appreciate that. So is there anything else you wanted to, you know, I went through a little bit of your bio there. Um, is there anything else you want us to know about uh, your, your background and how you got started, how you specifically got into the veterans uh, community here? Well, let's see my background. Um, old lady from North Carolina that loves collard greens and smoked neck bones. Okay. I'm, I'm just a really old country woman that has heart full of love. And um, although I grew up in a military town, I grew up between two military bases. Um, I, I really have to say that it was when I took my tour overseas that I really got to see the close-up um, excellence, leadership, phenomenal uh, wisdom of the military. 
it was just absolutely, um, it was just uh, an amazing opportunity. I'll just never, ever forget it. That's fantastic. And I understand some of your business background comes with working with the military and for the military in a civilian role. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, if you really want to know uh, how to get your uh, success mode on going, uh, work for the military, support the military. You know, it's interesting. I had a young lady that worked for me. And uh, I saw she had some, she was pretty good uh, rank. And so she thought her civilian rank outranked the lower rank of the military. And so I, I said, come in my office for a minute. I want to talk to you about something. And so I started to tell her, I said, you see that painting over there on the wall? She said, yes. I said, have you ever seen someone walk into a room and say, wow, Look at that canvas. And she said, canvas? She said, no, everybody notices a picture. I said, okay, you're the canvas and the military is a painting. That's an easy way for you to understand it. So the, the lowest ranked military person outranks you because we are here to be that canvas. And, and you know, I think that is a phenomenal way to lead into um, your commitment to military members after their service. Um, yes. You know, the things you, you you do from the calendar, which, you know, I've been a, personally been a part of and has, has raised an incredible sum of money for, for yeah. veterans in the community to uh, the event you're holding this Saturday. What um, what are some areas when you're, when you're talking about veterans roles and, and, and uh, yeah. struggles that you see with veterans. What are some areas where you're really seeing veterans struggle right now? I mean, we're coming out of an impress unprecedented year um, with, you know, unemployment and, and things like that. We're on the way up. And the last thing we want to see is veterans get left behind. So what are you seeing that uh, the community at large can help with? Wow. Well, um, the hardest thing for me to do is to sit here and talk about some of these things without crying, but I'm, I'm going to try. When I, the first thing that, and that's why I tag myself 365, 24-7 uh, veteran supporter. But the first thing that really just absolutely and totally uh, blows my mind is the fact that the concept that we can have one or two days, three days to support veterans. Oh my gosh, I, I, I just can't, I, I try to wrap my head around it. You know, I always say seek first to understand then to be understood, but I'm still in that trying to understand how can someone, you know, try to limit, and they think they're doing a big thing, oh, by the way. You know, they're celebrating the veterans. I'm like, whoa, what happens to the rest of the days? What about all the all the nights that we lie in our beds and we're able to, to rest and, and sleep comfortably in peace because someone else is out there protecting us, defending us. I, 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 I had a concept when I worked overseas. I thought that when you have someone serving in a civilian capacity with the, with the government, I felt that it should be mandatory for them to go overseas so they can have a firsthand glance at what the military worldwide, it's not just here, you know, you have that interaction overseas. So when I see the leadership, when I see the commitment, when I see the tenacity, when I see the, the caring and the loyalty and the respect, I, I mean, there are so many, what's not to love? What's not to respect? And that's why when uh, many times when I write something, I'll say my heroes, because that's what veterans are. They are they are heroes. And many times when when they go overseas, they come back or they go to war, they come back. Uh, we don't have a clue as a civilian. We don't have a clue as to what they may have gone through. And everybody that comes back they don't always show their wounds. 
You may not see a bullet wound. You may not see a lost limb, but there's something that you go through. You leave in your family, you know, you have to get it. And trust me, when you work for the military, oh, don't come in there with the lollygagging because you have to hit the deck ready to roll. I mean, it's no, okay, let me find a home and I have three or four months to do this. No, you better get your little tush, you know, in action. So there are many, many sacrifices. The children, um, the hours that they have to work. You know, we have, okay, it's five o'clock, it's time for me to go home. Oh, no. No, you will not. I, some of the, the longest nights I've ever spent have been supporting military, especially overseas. I mean, I have been out two or three o'clock in the morning, um, you know, working. I've been overnight many times and I'm not complaining. It was a, it was my choice. You know, I wanted to rise to the occasion. And so supporting being that canvas. Oh yeah. It takes something to be the canvas. Trust me. It takes something. To be it, the it canvas. Does. You know, I think it speaks um, so much to, to your adage of the 24 seven, 365. And you brought up a great point at the beginning there. And it's something that I, I talk about um, relatively frequently, mm. you know, May and November, fantastic yeah. months. They're months that we celebrate yeah. Veterans military, we 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 mourn uh, those who who you know yes. sacrifice for our freedom. What about sacrifice. what about today? What about June tenth? Yeah. And I think it's so important that we have this conversation now um, in June because it's something we don't forget about. It's something we move forward. And folks um, like you who who literally live that life, and I, I uh, you know, we're as a veteran, I'm super grateful. Yeah. And um, you know, moving. Uh, moving out of this pandemic, there's going to be needs that are hard to meet and unmet for our for everyone. But you know, our veteran communities tend to to get hit pretty hard, whether it be from employment or, or otherwise. Um, and, and one of the things that we talked about here, and, and you mentioned, is military families. Oh my gosh, yes. So talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind, and, and how you've seen military families impacted and veterans families. I know you do work with Serve Our Willing Warriors, mm -hmm. which, you know, one of the greatest things I, I hope to have Shirley on, you know, in an upcoming episode here. Yes. Um, you know, one of the things I love about them is they're so inclusive of the family. That retreat exactly. process is so inclusive. So if you don't mind talking a little bit about what you've seen as far as military families and support that, that's been given to them. Yeah, the... Uh, one of the things that you will see that you have the family, you have the military member, um, and many times you don't see the the military spouse, the military children, or what they go through. But sometimes you'll you'll see a little something on TV, and they will have a uh, a military child that the parent comes home, and you see that they're so joyful, they're so happy because they've missed their mother or they missed their father. Um, unfortunately, um, I've been around for a long time and some things I've seen that have changed a lot in our world because when I was young, I didn't have a cell phone, hello, barely had a telephone. But some things have not changed as much as they should have. I came to the Manassas uh, area, oh, 53, 54 years ago as a military spouse. Wow. And, and guess what happened? I had difficulty finding a job. Okay. Um, and guess what happens today? We have military spouses that have difficulty finding a job. So often. Yeah, so often. And what is the impact? You know, I'm telling you, uh, I wish I could. Uh, just go and tap somebody on the shoulder and have them uh, secured for uh, some comprehensive training when they feel that they don't want to give a military spouse a job because she may leave. You know, how long is she going to be here? What are her qualifications? It's been proven that the average military spouse is more educated, more prepared, has more experience than most non-military spouses. 
You know, what happens to the children when the parents are away? That those are the kinds of things that are horrible. And 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 worst of all, do you know there are military members that that are qualifying for social, uh, I mean, special assistance, financial assistance, because they don't make enough money. Okay, did I say that loud enough? Yeah. Yeah. So how can how can you have someone that's dedicated, committed, willing to lay down their life for their country, and and they don't get enough money to feed their families? Oh wow, something's wrong. Something's wrong with that picture, and and we need to do something about it. One of the things about my nonprofit, Agape Love in Action, when I was given this this nonprofit, the Lord gave me this vision for this nonprofit. It's one thing to love, but where is the action? We have to put hands and feet on this love, and 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 my challenge, my challenge to to other small businesses and individuals. Always know that what you can give and share uh, is never too small. You know, I love the picture of your son. And I'm like, wow, how old is he? 15 months. 15 months old. And he's out there doing what he can do to honor veterans. Oh, my God, I, that's priceless. That is totally priceless. And we need to do that, but we need to honor with our actions, not just, you know, okay, I'm I'm sorry. I've got to get on this one. Thank you for your service. Okay, would you mind doing something about it? You know, don't just say thank you. You know, it's like a man that's hungry and they're starving and you walk by and said, oh, I'm so sorry for you. What is that? Is that a piece of bread or is that a bone or what? Uh, we have to really get engaged. I'm going to tell you, last year, remember the year that we did the calendar, you were in it. Mm -hmm. No pandemic. The next year, pandemic. And I'm, I'll, I'll admit, there were some months in there that I was like, oh, my gosh, how can I do this? Who's, how can I, what about the pictures? What about the pandemic? What about all of this? We had only uh, interviewed one person and that was Brigadier General McGee. Everybody else we had not. He came to my home and that was it. It was after that it was shut down. And I began to think and to wonder and to doubt myself. And I was like, okay, Corliss, come on. You're doing this for veterans. You know, that's all I had to do. And instantly, instantly, I thought about all of the different engagements that I had gone through when I supported the military. You know, we didn't even know that word, give up, quit. I can't do it. Oh, no, you better throw that out the window and get, and get going. And so with that, uh, not only did we do it, but we raised double the amount we had the year before. That's amazing. Yeah. So we were able, instead of one organization, we were able to assist three uh, veteran organizations. And that's, so, you know, that's, that's what I love so much about the organization. You are not only committed to helping the veterans, you are committed to helping organizations that help the veterans. And we talk yes. about getting into action. Um, yes. I think that's where it's all about. You know, we've got 56 some odd thousand veterans that live in Virginia's 10th district, mm -hmm. Clark, Frederick, Fairfax, Loudoun, and Prince William counties that we, we have the honor and I have the honor and the congressman has the honor of serving. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of opportunity for that, you know, right? and, and outside of the months we talked about, you know, right. the, with the pandemic leading up, we're going to be seeing a lot more um in-person events a lot more opportunity to get out there the the um honor flights are going to start picking back up and that's mm -hmm. something i personally love to do and one thing you've got coming up is the celebration of Aaliyah's sixth anniversary yes. uh, with a special luncheon um next saturday june 19th we want to talk a little bit about that yeah 
Um, and one of the things I, I wanted to say something uh, very quickly about Perfect. supporting other veteran organizations. Okay, please. I am begging. I'm not on my knees, but I'm begging, you know, to all that see someone doing great things for veterans. It is not necessary. I repeat, it is not necessary for you to duplicate and copy what's being done. If what is being done is helping the veterans, please, would you mind just joining in and making it greater? from great to greater. You can have your own opportunity to do something, but don't just try to start something if it's already working and you know that your support can make it greater. And that's one of the things that I've tried to do. Uh, I, I don't have the ability to do a retreat, but there's a retreat close by. There's one that I can support, so that's what I do. With PenFed Foundation, I was going to have a, a scholarship for uh, this year. But when I looked at PenFed Foundation, excellent, excellent plan, excellent program, excellent execution from the top all the way through. So am I gonna just go out and, and try to have my name on something or my nonprofit's name? No, I'm going to go with the person that has the excellence and say, here, take this and make it greater. That's what we really have to do. And it doesn't mean that you can't do something, but stay in your own lane. It's like people that can't sing. If you know you can't sing, do not volunteer, especially at one of my events, because I'm not going to call on you. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, people call me for the national anthem all the time, but uh, I always have to direct them other places. Yeah, we better get <laughs> we better get the voices of service. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thing. But um, so what I decided to do this year is a quasi virtual, I guess, because I have a location where someone, a veteran, is going to be cooking, and some nice, uh, delicious treats, <laughs> and so. We will deliver to a, a um, transitional housing. And this is where veterans who are homeless have transitioned to a place before they get their own home. We will take uh, food there, all delivered by veterans. We will deliver, there are two families that will be at the retreat, plus some board of director members. We will deliver to the um, uh, Serve Our Women Warriors Retreat in Haymarket. And then uh, uh, Victor Angry, who is uh, one of the county supervisors, Prince William County supervisors, has arranged for us to be able to use the firehouse in Dale City. So we'll have veterans there. So I already have veterans that have volunteered, including you, that will be there on hand to make sure everything is packed and delivered to three sites. And I wanted to do that because June, uh, actually our anniversary month is March, but I kind of combined it um, with, with my birthday because that's something I started doing some years ago, give back, you know, show that I appreciate my life by doing something with it, showing that I appreciate my life by doing something with it. And it's always best, you know, they say if you, if you see something, say something. Okay, listen up, scrap that. If you see something, please do something. Because your words, your words are good, but your actions are even better. Just think, if we took, if each person took 10 minutes to say, I mean, to do something to appreciate a veteran, Man, what what a difference it would make! Yeah. And I I genuinely don't think there are better words we can close with. <laughs> so with that, Miss Corliss, I I can't tell you how appreciative I am and how appreciative the Congresswoman is for your time today and everything that you do. Um, yeah, I certainly look forward to continuing working with you as as I have for years now, yeah. and um, you know. Keep uh, keep up the great work for these veterans. Uh, for us, 
uh, it's for us and, and we appreciate it. Yeah, um, my heart is smiling. Yeah. Mine too. My heart is smiling. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And uh, everyone watching, we appreciate you uh, being with us today. Um, as we close out on the screen, you'll see the um, details for next week's event, along with the website link for Ms. Corliss's uh, Aaliyah Foundation. And um, if you ever need anything uh, from a veteran standpoint, our office stands by to help. Again, I have the pleasure of serving uh, in this role with the Congresswoman. I do constituent casework and I'm happy to help at any time. Please feel free to reach out to our office and uh, my contact information will also be up um, at the end of this video. So thank you Please. so much, Ms. Corliss. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. And, I wanted uh, to let them know that you are the real deal, honestly. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I love you and I know what you do and I so much appreciate all the help that you've given me, the encouragement. 